So I just want to do a start, for, start our program tonight by, by introducing, I'm Wayne Norton. I'm the uh, president of the Near Northwest District. And uh, I want to welcome all of you to our eighth annual Business Network celebration. It's hard to believe we've been doing this for eight years. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to gather everybody together and to talk about the 2023 successes for last year. It's been a very busy period of time, and I'm sure many of you have seen these big trucks rolling around the streets. It's uh, just the beginning of it, so we can be ready for it. Um, and we're also going to be talking about uh, the plans for uh, 2024. That's a, seems like it should be a long way away, but it's not. It's very soon. Um, as we're getting started here, um, I want to encourage all of you, if you're involved in social media, is to don't be shy and send information out to people that you know. Let them know where you're at, what you're doing, anything that you have learned that uh, you think they would be interested in. Uh, we're doing everything we can to broaden our awareness, and social media is the way to do it. And you're the key to making it all happen. So when you're doing that, please make sure that you tag us so we're aware of what's happening. So please uh, feel free to, to, to do all that. Um, one of the things that uh, we always do when we have our meetings is um, the board of the um, Near Northwest District is managed by a board of directors, and we have five directors with us today. Uh, we have Heidi Sheasley, who is right here, and she's uh, the chairman of our board. And Jerry Squares is with us. He's back over here. Jerry's with us. We have uh, Upma Goyal. She's right here also. And we have uh, Dr. Quentin Wright is here with us, right to the back. Uh, these, uh, these men and women spend a lot of time working with us to make sure that things run smoothly. They're also the, uh, the judges that tell us whether we're doing things right or wrong. So. Um, one of the things that we don't do on a regular basis, but I think tonight's the right night to do this, is um, I'm going to introduce our staff. We've got a very aggressive staff, as all, you all know. Uh, they're not shy about asking for anything, and they do a, a great job for us. Um, Eileen Egan is right over here. <laughs> Shalou Agrawal. Shalou, Shalou checked you in, so when you leave, say hi to Shalou, okay? Uh, Jan Whittington is right here. Walter Funes is here, right over here. Uh, Alicia Deslett is out front, if I remember correctly. And Robert is right here with the camera, okay? We have a number of people here um, that I, would, I really would like to introduce, but I don't know whether they're here or not. So I'm just going to call their names. If you're here, just wave, okay? Um, Amy Peck, I haven't seen Amy. Is she here? Oh, there she is. I've seen Amy. Amy, can you come up here real quick? I'm going to give you the microphone for a second. Okay? You must have just walked in. <laughs> Blame it on traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. Sorry I'm late. I'm Amy Peck. I'm city council member for District A. Um, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Um, this is such a great event every year, and we're just so appreciative of the Near Northwest Management District and everything they do in our community. So thank you so much. Great thank you. So, we uh, Sherry Cortez with... Uh, uh, a District Attorney Kim Ogg's office. She's not here. Um, Aisha Wilson. I don't see her. Sheldon Moss with Lone Star. Don't see him. Uh, we have Sergeant Grandstaff. He's right back here. And Deputy Madrid is here with us also. She's our newest constable to join our team. Uh, starting January 1, we're going to have five constables on our team. And um, uh, Sergeant uh, Grandstaff is, uh, is the person in charge of the whole show. 
and we work very closely with him and uh, with our security committee. It's, they're doing a great job, doing a wonderful job. Um, we also have um, Arturo Michelle with us, and Arturo is our city attorney. <laughs> Arturo has been a, a tremendous friend of ours for a number of years. So. Okay, Bryce Randall's here with Precinct One with Rodney Ellis's office. Bryce, I knew that. We talked, I'm sorry. So, uh, we've got um, Anita Ivory is here. I talked with her earlier. She may be, yep, okay. And then, um, that takes care of that. So. Um, one of the things that we do every year is, is we talk about the uh, 2000, the, the, the year that we just are completing. And what we did this year, instead of me being the one doing the talking, we uh, put together a, a short little video for you to watch. I want you to encourage, it uh, kind of gives you a quick summation of what uh, that took place this year. The Near Northwest Management District provides services and leadership that supports a very vibrant business community. Our success can be seen in the phenomenal growth in the number of quality new businesses within the district. And the improvements for beautification in the area is a, has a significant increase in the property values and new construction. The district supports security, beautification, infrastructure, and other community building projects that enhance the area and promotes the district as a place where you want to build your business. As a management district, we are uniquely positioned keep property and business owners connected and to influence the city, county, and state government on the issues that are needed throughout the district and by our property owners. The district was created in 2001 and began operations in 2004. During that time, commercial property values have nearly quadrupled from 700 million when we began to more than 2.7 billion this year alone, new construction was $148 million, which added value to our community. One of the purposes for the district being developed back in 2001 was security. Crime in our area is at below or average in the city. Most issues that we now have are called nuisance crime, and those are crimes meaning crimes of opportunity leaving your laptop laying on your car seat with your doors unlocked. Those are the kinds of problems that our officers are seeing more and more and more of. One of our programs, our litter abatement program, has picked up 10 tons of trash on our major thoroughfares and 770 bandit signs this year. That's a lot of trash. But I'll also tell you, it's a third of the amount of trash that we picked up last year. So we're making progress in this issue of reminding people not to litter our community. Our code enforcement program addresses everything from overgrown weeds to damaged street signs. Violations are usually reported to the city and taken care of within 60 days of that report. Our graffiti abatement team, however, they're the ones that paint over all the graffiti, um, have cleaned 111 sites this year so far. We started our crime deterrence for apartments and businesses program, which is now called CDAB. Um, on those meetings started in April and have seen a really strong growth, almost doubling the number of people that are attending on a monthly basis. And many of those are police officers who are meeting with each other to talk about the area and things that can be done. In October, HPD co-hosted our first end of year PIP celebration award ceremony. We had over 100 people in attendance. Many of them were volunteers that spent time working with HPD to make it a successful organization. Through efforts with our constables and HPD's differential response team, the district addressed major homeless encampments throughout the district. They did it by removing vagrants from the area um, properties and working with the property owners to clean up those areas where they were living. Our big national night out program returned despite all of the rain that we had all day that day. But we had a great turnout. We had over 1,200 guests. We had a petting zoo and the kids loved every minute of it. 
Another program that we're working on was with the Houston Apartment Association. They have a software that we are now paying for, for all of our multifamily properties to use to screen potential customers who are coming in to rent properties. It's been very successful and is continuing to grow and attracting a lot of multifamily usage. This year we had a lot of fun with Target Precinct 1 um, as we hosted the second annual Trunk or Treat event here at the White Oak Conference Center. We had a great turnout and we had lots of kids and it was a safe place for kids to trick or treat. We've worked aggressively on marketing within our district. We kicked off our marketing campaign this fall with radio ads and it boosted our awareness and significantly increased our traffic to our newly updated website. Our Facebook page has really grown dramatically with engagement reaching 240% from August to November. We've also grown our outreach by over 300%. This page is more inviting and more informative and is connecting our local businesses with each other, which is very important. In personal attendance at our quarterly Business Network event continues to grow. We have average attendances at 75 business leaders and very strong speakers coming in from throughout the city. In September, we hosted a mayoral and city council candidate town hall meeting with all the leading candidates being here and a chance to meet and understand all these business owners and to hear what their concerns are. These efforts are reestablishing the district as the place to live, work, invest. That's what's important to us. Those investments have really paid off on a number of projects that are taking place within the area. For example, we wrapped up our first of many capital projects which is where we are looking, uh, focusing. It was the West Lily York Streamside Improvement Project. It's a lot to say. But that project has really changed the usage of West Lily York on the western side of the district. The district has worked with Houston Parks Board on renovations for Aaron Ledette and Forest West Park. And this included adding solar lights to Aaron Ledette which was badly needed. District staff has closely coordinated with the city and with the consultants planning the Antoine Drive rebuild. As we all know, we've heard about this for a number of years, but we have, we have now segment one has been committed to begin in 2025. We again partnered with Precinct One, Alan Rosen's office, for the annual toy drive. This is a drive that we have done for a number of years, and it provides toys and gifts to young people who would not be getting anything. The White Oak Conference Center continues to be a place for bookings of meetings for the community as well as activities for baby weddings, baby showers, birthday parties, and other special events. The White Oak Pool continues to attract membership. It's a great area for people who want to cool off in the middle of summer. And the membership pool is a great opportunity for everyone to enjoy each other. As you can see, we're a very busy organization. There's a lot of things happening, and there's a lot of changes that are coming. And I will tell you that our board and staff are very excited about serving the community and rebuilding an area that once was fabulous. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it uh, gives me a great pleasure to introduce our Congresswoman from uh, <laughs> Um, That's all right, I, just, I just want brain dead. <laughs> so, but I want to introduce you to Sheila Jackson Lee. She's been a tremendous partner of ours for a long time. Thank you, Wayne, very, very much. I stand on my tippy toes. Happy holiday, everyone. This is such a, a festive uh, look, and you look festive. And what a wonderful display of the work of the management district. Can we give uh, Wayne, Eileen, the whole team a very big applause? I mean, I was, all of you. Uh, and I have watched the management district not only grow, but reinvent itself only because it is looking to the future of this neighborhood. So many assets uh, that are here in this Northwest region uh, and so many assets to be able, as Wayne is doing, uh, to build on the management district. As we were reminiscing, we were sitting there talking about the federal funds that have come to partnership on a lot of flood mitigation issues. And I don't know if Wayne remembers uh, some years ago when the 
mapping of the White Oak Bayou um, had uh, literally eliminated um, a whole batch of homes, good looking homes. Uh, and uh, that was too much for me to even entertain that the federal government was gonna do that. We actually sat down in a big room with the map, uh, with FEMA, and literally rewrote uh, the map for all those homes to be saved. So they would not be uh, in the flood area that FEMA was saying. We've done some great work together, uh, and we appreciate very much being able to be here this evening and wishing you a very happy holiday. I am wearing the congressional hat, and so I'm going to uh, say to you, uh, it has been a pleasure uh, working with management districts in tiers, uh, a very unique phenomenon in the city of Houston uh, that many of my colleagues in Washington are just not familiar with. But I tell them the kind of metamorphical, but the kind of seismic change, uh, the zero to 180, and then zero to 360, that these organizations can make. So if I step aside to the mayor's hat, let me simply say they will be reinforced and reaffirmed uh, under my leadership so that cities with outstanding management districts like yours can do a number of things. One, enhance our safety. Um, make sure that we have visibility in our safety. You're working with my good friend, uh, Precinct One, Constable Rosen, but to use our sheriff, our constables, our school district officers, our HPD, and yes, even in this area, you have a very large federal presence with the FBI office that's moved out to 290. Uh, those are federal resources that are eager to be of help to us and have been of great help in collaborating in particular with HBD and the Department of Justice that has just uh, finished, not really finished, but uh, come to uh, sort of a conclusion on some very heavy work they've been doing with fighting against major gangs. And that has been a partnership between local law enforcement and the Department of Justice, of which I oversee as a member of the uh, Judiciary Committee and a chairwoman of the Crime Subcommittee. There is good work that can be done if we work and do it together. And I want to applaud you for uh, the um, cleanup of our homeless sites. We want to make sure that we move homeless uh, to being housed uh, in places uh, where they are not returning to homelessness and they have the services. We can do all these things together by leveraging uh, neighbors, neighborhoods, and very, very vital uh, component that are tiers and management districts. I have no desire to do anything that sends them away. I have every desire that elevates them. One of the final points I wanna make is that the federal government loves giving dollars to established organizations like a management district so that it can also give money to cities, big money. Uh, we just got $6 million uh, to the HPD for 50 new officers. That's federal dollars. We like doing that, but we also like doing specific projects uh, that Wayne and the management district can offer uh, to us to enhance uh, the community and a better quality of life. I like to say kitchen table issues are certainly issues that we all should be concerned about because they are making your life better and young families' life better or single parents' life better. Uh, they're really improving uh, our love of this city. So thank you, first of all, for a national night out that you always do that brings out hundreds and hundreds of people, a safe Halloween night that keeps our children safe. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we're delighted uh, to be able to uh, ensure that federal funds come uh, so that one, we can continue to build affordable housing. I'm trying to think of that housing project that we were dealing with some years ago. We were either tearing down to build up, but what we were trying to do is to make housing better in this neighborhood. And you are beginning to see the fruits of your labor. So again, have a wonderful holiday. Uh, and um, uh, with a little self um, emphasis, um, he's standing there. A little self-emphasis, there is an election on December 9th, uh, and it goes from 7 to 7, uh, and there is um, a lady uh, that is running, and we hope you'll remember her. But um, um, I end by wishing you a wonderful holiday, and I'll end by, again, reinforcing that this is uh, the first uh, day of Hanukkah. Let us all, let us all in this season 
however we are able to honor it or to celebrate it. I do it with warmth, uh, with family and friends, and with a view to the future, that all things where we can work together will be better for us as individuals, but it'll be better for us as families, as neighbors, and as the great city of Houston. We live in a great country, and Houston is a great asset to the United States of America. God bless all of you. God bless the United States of America. And let me just say, my veterans in the room, never leave without saying thank you for your service. Well, th thank you very much for being here. I appreciate your, uh, your effort on getting here, because I know it was an effort. Thank you very much. Um, I also, I'm going to pick up on what she said. Don't forget to vote. That's what I'm going to say. Don't forget to vote, OK? Um, one of the things that uh, we do on this particular night is we identify some of the key projects that we've been working on and some of those individuals that help make them happen. The uh, first, I think I turned the page too soon. Yeah, I did. Um, one of the things that I wanted to, to I really identify, um, the Congresswoman was talking about uh, housing, uh, is Willow Plaza Apartments. The uh, Gonzalez Group developed a nine and a half acre site into a beautiful new luxurious apartment complex with 300 units. Willow Plaza boasts high-end finishes, and the community includes resort style, or a resort-style pool with cabanas. It has outdoor grills, it has a fitness center and yoga studios. It is pet-friendly and includes a pet park with a walking trail, which is really nice. This project is located at 12752 North Houston Roslyn, up by um, Highway 249. Um, I'm pleased to award this Grow Near Award to Willow Plaza Apartments. Tony, would you and your team like to come up? So. Wayne, thank you for the honor. We appreciate the recognition. Uh, this is part of the team that made sure that project happened on the construction side. Gary Bronikowski, operations manager. Jesse Marin, project manager. Tyler West, project superintendent. And Mike McClay, senior project manager. The project could not have happened without their help. They made, they made, the, they made our, our uh, lack of a better word, our dream come true on this project from conception to I think the end of this month will, or first of next year will be complete, completed with the project. So I want to definitely recognize all their hard work. We couldn't have done it without them. The Gonzalez Group, we're a small family uh, construction company. We're third generation. Uh, we formed our company in 1999, uh, me and two brothers, so it's three of us. Um, we actually formed the company in 99 to develop and build a eight unit, one building apartment project. And so here, 24 years later, we're doing a 300 unit apartment project. So it's very exciting and very rewarding, uh, nerve wracking all at the same time, but um, leasing's going well. So it's, it's, it's a, to be recognized for this uh, project this evening and with the management district is, is certainly appreciated. Um, we do, we have two divisions of our company. We have a commercial construction company that does a lot of public work with the city of Houston, Harris County, Metro, Houston Airport System on a wide range of type projects, renovation and construction. Uh, and then of course we have our, another division that does the multifamily construction and development. So we not only build on our own account like Willow Plaza uh, apartments, but we also build for other developers that don't have their in-house construction company. So. Uh, we're currently wrapping up a 210-unit uh, project just south, uh, 288 south, uh, for, for a particular uh, client on that type of project. So this area has a, has a special meaning for me because I was, I was sharing with Jerry and Eileen earlier. 
I, as a young boy, I grew up uh, in elementary school and junior high. I grew up in woodland trails around the corner. Around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I went to uh, Holbrook Elementary and then went to Dean Junior High and then went to, Cy uh, went to Jersey Village for one year and then we moved a little further out, uh, Highway 6 and 529, and I finished up at Cypher High School. So uh, I drive by this area, going to our, going to our development on a, on a regular basis. So I, I, I have, and I drive through the neighborhood, and I, I look at the house we grew up in. Uh, and so it's, 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 very, uh, it's very awesome. My grandparents lived in Arbor Oaks, right around the corner before uh, they tore down the houses for the flood mitigation. So. Uh, it's got a special place. So again, this is the type of this is the type of area we like to build and develop. This is such what I heard this evening, and unfortunately, I wish I would have been involved a lot sooner. But this inspires us to go and build in communities such as that, that that are that can be built in a management district such as y'all's. Y'all obviously have spent a lot of time, a lot of dedication, and worked hard at, at maintaining the the area, and you can tell. And that's. That's one of the biggest things when we decide to develop in a particular area. We look at obviously land costs, that's a big issue. Um, the location obviously, what, but what, one of the big things in addition to the location is we look at how, how clean is the area? What, what you know, how, how, are the, how are people keeping up with their properties, with their businesses? And I, we, we'll drive roads and streets all day long before we make a final decision to actually make an investment. And it's, it's readily identifiable when you come out in this area. You can see that the management district and the businesses really work hard in, in trying to maintain uh, the area. And so it, it, I, after, I was, I was already, already feeling comfortable about the development. I'm feeling extra comfortable about the development, knowing what kind of input and what type of participants are in the area. So I want to thank you all for the opportunity. I want to thank you again for the recognition. We appreciate it. It means a lot. And we hope to be, we want to maintain a relationship and contribute uh, as much as we can as the Gonzalez Group and as Willow Plaza. So thanks again. The, the uh, next award goes to Burlington Store. And I'm going to even give you the number to be specific. <laughs> 1424 is the number for it. But over the last few years, we've seen a lot of our big box stores, the national retailers, kind of either dwindle down or disappear, one or the other. But we're very glad to see that Burlington Stores, who is a national discount retailer, offering low prices on everyday brand name merchandise for the entire family, for the home. It op has opened a store in our district. We're really happy to have that happen. Shoppers will find fantastic deals on the brands that they love. I didn't write that particular piece, okay? <laughs> uh -oh. the, uh, the new Burlington store is located at 13238 Northwest Freeway in the Northwest Cropping excuse me, Northwest Crossing Shopping Center at Hollister. I'm very pleased <clears throat> to present the Gronier Award to Burlington. To Leslie Soto is the Regional Vice President of Burlington. Leslie, do you want to come up? Bring your team. And bring your team. Thank you. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Eileen, for the invite. And we want to thank Northwest Management District 
and the Economics and Business Development Committee for this amazing recognition. We appreciate it. As um, Wayne mentioned, I am Leslie Sutter, the Regional Vice President for Burlington Stores. I am honored to be invited this evening. As many of you know, we opened our store in the Northwest Crossing area a little over a year ago. It was actually in November of 2022. And we much, very much appreciate the warm welcome um, to all of the community. Uh, we have over 100 stores in the Texas uh, region, and we have 14 stores in the greater Houston area, and we'll continue to grow nationally. In fact, just this last month, we celebrated our 1,000 store celebration in Astoria, New York. As you mentioned, we continue to grow. Not only do we pride ourselves in offering customers bargains, as you mentioned, on top brands and a chance to find something new every time you shop our stores, we also believe that we do business, as we do business, it's just as important to do to how we do our business and the results we, we value for our customers. For more than 50 years, value has been at the heart of what we do. And you can see that in our Burlington B. Whether it is offering prices on our brand names or our everyday um, local community outreach. So we, we again, we thank you for this amazing recognition. Hopefully we can see you in one of our stores. Um, you can see that we're growing every day and um, thank you again. Thank you. This is Chelsea. <laughs> okay, I've got one more one one more final award to give. And um, this award goes to Houston Parks Board. Houston Parks Board has been a tremendous partner of the districts. They have done a lot with us. They've listened to us. They've complained about us. We've complained about them. We all, we all get along okay, fortunately. We still do. That's what, that's what counts. But they've done, we, we're very, very proud of the work that, that they have done for us and with us. Um, we were the first completed Bayou Greenway project, the White Oak project, that when it was first done. It runs through our entire area, and we know the benefits that has come from that particular e effort that they put in place. And now there's a program called the 5050 Park Partner Program, and that program matches private donations with the city investments and to re rehabilitate and to renovate neighborhood parks. The Aaron Ledette Park on Antoine and the Forest West Park on Golden Forest were included in this round of, of work. The Houston Bar Parks Board led the design process, conducted community outreach to hear what the residents wanted and needed, managed the construction. Both parks got new playground equipment, new shade structures, and in one area, in one park, lighting was a very major concern because of safety. And with the working with the city and with the Houston Parks Board, solar lighting was installed. And what that turned in is that it really allowed triple the number of regular lights that would be seen in a park. And it has made a big difference in regards to reducing cost, but also in adding safety to the entire park. It's an honor to present the Grow Near Award for, to Houston Parks Board for Aaron Ledette and Forest West Park. Beth White was, is here, and Matt, you're his, here also. Please come up. Thank you so much, Wayne. And I don't know what you're talking about, that anyone could complain about the near Northwest Management District. Um, Wayne has been such a collaborator and partner, along with Eileen, um, one of the first people I met when I came to Houston seven years ago, and we have been joined at the hip ever since. 
Um, this is our chief operating officer, Matt Nielsen, who's joining me tonight, and we are just thrilled to accept this award. Um, neighborhood parks are really near and dear to our hearts. It's the reason we were formed back in 1976. We're nearly 50 years old as an organization, formed by a few philanthropists who wanted to help parks. And if you think of us as sort of the citywide conservancy, we don't focus on a single park. We look at the entire system. And unfortunately, out of our 175 neighborhood parks, a lot of them don't get the kind of love and care and attention that they deserve just because of uh, not enough resources. So when Mayor Turner came to us and asked us to really double down on park equity and challenged us to take a look at this system, um, we, we were grateful for the challenge. We teamed up with Greater Houston Partnership with the Mayor's Complete Communities Initiative, the Resilience Office, uh, Precinct One, <laughs> the Congresswoman, the Council Members, everyone really pitched in and we're so delighted that it's Aaron Lede and Forest West Parks that are being recognized because one of our uh, dear board members, Don Aaron, donated that land um, nearly 20 years ago with your help. And uh, he was at the ribbon cutting for the improvements to the park and it just, it meant so much to him and to our organization. As Wayne said, we worked very closely together on achieving the completion of the White Oak Bio Greenway. It was the first complete greenway of the Bio Greenway system, 17 miles long, runs right along here. Um, and from that work, uh, we're continuing to work hand in hand on the improvements to this beautiful property and also the new Vogel Creek Greenway. So Matt wanted me uh, to remind everyone we have a ribbon cutting and celebration on December 17th, Sunday, from noon to two o'clock. So please come out and join us and explore your brand new one mile long uh, bio greenway on Vogel Creek. And thank you to Precinct One for the great support from Commissioner Ellis. And uh, the Congresswoman, I think, has already left, but she has been at every ribbon cutting of sure. the 5050 parks or Bio Greenway parks in her district. Uh, Amy Peck has been an amazing partner since before she was the Councilwoman. So all of you in this room just do so much to lift up Houston and make our community stronger. And we're just really grateful to work with all of you. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna wrap this up pretty quick. I just wanna talk about uh, 2024. It's hard to believe we're talking about 2024 already. I can't believe it, so. Um, but 2024, we're gonna continue focusing on public safety. That is always going to be one of our, our number one issue to deal with. And we're gonna be working with initiatives, working with the constables, working with HPD, working with the Sheriff's Department, and all the other policing entities that are up here. We have a monthly meeting where they all get together, st sit around a, a conference table and talk with each other. And that the team building has really paid off to our advantage as we see crime continuing to decrease. We're going to be adding that fifth patrol officer, which we mentioned. Um, our our cleanup crews continue to pick up litter uh, all all the time. They're going to be uh, mowing the esplanades and taking more um, better care of that. They also are going to be ex extending the um, graffiti program and reaching out and, and covering up the graffiti that does get sprayed around from time to time. The, our West Tidwell sidewalk project, that project is, is going to into construction the first part of next year. It's, uh, we're rebuilding sidewalks between Antoine uh, and T.C. Jester. We're also putting in an a, 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 a addition that's going to feed into White Oak Bike Trail. So there's gonna be an entrance from the street level down to the bike trail. We're going to be turning that into a small park. We're also working on inter improving our intersections. We've got a number of intersections that we believe need to be need some, some safety issues. 
we'll be putting in uh, new sidewalks and um, new uh, crosswalks in some of these. The first one that's going to be happening is Bingle. That's going to start the first middle of the year. Based on the success of our, mar our radio marketing program, we're going to be uh, continuing the fall marketing campaign. And then we're also going to be adding the spring campaign where we're going to be talking about uh, commercial property as well as residential property up here. To let people know that you can also work here, you can also live here, and it's a great combination. Um, we're also going to be working on um, our capital projects. We've got a lot of, there's a lot of capital projects happening right now. All you've got to do is come up here in the middle of the day and there are trucks filled with dirt everywhere from corner to corner. It's unbelievable. But we've got the water, the su surface water supply project is going on. The Inwood Forest Detention Construction is going on. And the Chateau Forest Detention Project is going to be getting started. All that's going to be taking place throughout the entire 2024. The, uh, the traditionally, as an organization, we've got a couple of programs that we uh, take great, great pride in. And one is our White Oak Plant Sale, where Heidi Sheasley helps us put together a plant sale that uh, is, helps businesses and residences uh, clean up and dress up their homes and their businesses. And that, uh, that takes place, will take place on August of this coming year. I, yeah, April. Started with an A, I was close. Um, yeah, yeah. So that, that uh, program, and then also our National Night Out. And we, we traditionally have and continue to have the largest National Night Out in the city of Houston. Um, we do a great job with that. Uh, we had uh, 40 uh, uh, businesses that came out and got themselves dressed up and got to meet the, business, the community. We had 1,200 residents show up, and uh, we have a lot of activities for kids to keep them busy. So uh, all in all, it's a, it's a very exciting place to be. Um, there's a lot of other projects that are coming up that we will be talking in greater detail about as the year goes along. So keep up with us. Uh, stay on social media. Watch what we're doing and see what's going on. I want to thank all of you for being here this evening. Here he comes. I'll give you the microphone. Yeah, I'll, help. I'll be oh. short. <laughs> yeah, that's quite all right. All right. Uh, my name is Bryce Randall. I'm a community affairs advisor for Commissioner Rodney Ellis's office. Um, and I just wanted to come up here uh, to briefly uh, recognize the efforts of the Near Northwest Management District uh, to not only revitalize the area, but also beautify uh, this area. Um, I do have a resolution here um, that was drafted up by our comms really nice words, but um, <laughs> uh, whenever I go to events and I, I hear people read directly uh, from the resolution, it's always a little bit awkward. Uh, so <laughs> I'm going to give you all some of my own words and then I'll mix that in uh, with what we have written here. Um, I know we talk a lot about the efforts of the Near Northwest Management District um, as far as uh, what it does for the community, but I want everybody to think about what it does uh, through the eyes of a child. Um, and I say that because I grew up in Independence Heights. Uh, for anybody who's from Independence Heights, y'all know we don't call it Independence Heights, we call it Studio Wood. Extra emphasis on the wood. <laughs> um, and my mom was a school teacher and is still serving to this day. And for the last three years of my high school experience, uh, she taught in Humble. Um, so with that being said, for the last three years of high school, I got to see a completely different side of Houston. Um, spent a lot of time in Atascacita, um, Summer Creek, uh, Kingwood, and Humble neighborhoods. And I remember going up there with my mom and be like, hey, why my neighborhood don't look like this? <laughs> you know, uh, why don't we have a Burlington Co factory? <laughs> you know, things like that, right? Um, so, you know, when you, when you go to a different neighborhood as a child and you see that the streets are in better condition, right? You see that the sidewalks are actually um, in great condition. Like if you hitch, hit it going 10 miles an hour on your bike, you're not gonna go flying into the air. You know, when you see that there's a, a world like that exists, um, you start asking yourself, why do we don't have that in it? And it can start messing with the child's self-worth, right? Because then they start asking themselves, well, maybe our neighborhood does not have these things because we are not worthy of these things. Um, so with that being said, 
Um, I think what the Near Northwest Management District has been doing uh, for the last uh, two decades in this neighborhood is really instrumental. Um, and it means a lot to the local community. Um, and it says something, it sends a message uh, to local community members, especially children. Um, so I wanna say thank you uh, to Wayne Norton, Eileen Egan, uh, the board, um, and every staff member for the work that you are doing in this area. Um, and now I will uh, read off a few lines uh, from this resolution. I promise I will spare y'all. Um, I will only read three points from this resolution uh, before I get, uh, step off of this podium. So uh, with that being said, <laughs> Waries, on behalf of the Office of Harris County Precinct 1 Commissioner Rodney Ellis, it is indeed a pleasure and honor to extend the warmest of greetings and congratulations to the Near Northwest Management District on the occasion of the eighth annual end of year business network celebration and Grow Near Awards. And uh, Waries, uh, the District Board of Directors in 2010 endorsed a 15 year service improvement and assessment plan providing a comprehensive framework uh, for the development and administration of services and programs in the areas of security and public safety, planning and urban design, marketing and perception enhancement and administration, and last one, <laughs> Uh, Waries, um, the district's leadership envisions building on its past accomplishments to further serve its constituency and position the near Northwest area as a premier place to work, live, and do business, thereby enhancing economic opportunities for area businesses and commercial property owners. And now, therefore, it be resolved that as, com as I'm saying as Commissioner of Harris County Precinct 1, my boss, <laughs> we proudly join the Near Northwest Management District on this special occasion as we celebrate the Business Network Celebration and Grow Near Awards adopted on this day, the seventh day of December 2023 by Harris County Precinct 1 Commissioner Rodney Ellis, Harris County, Texas. I, again, want to thank all of you for being here, and uh, this is going to wrap it up, but I do want to wish you a happy holidays and a very successful 2024.